Greetings folks, Pockets here, back again playing some Rave Online, once again on Kel, and we are doing a video today in this MOA that I built. You may have seen it in my previous video for tracking and range, and how that all works at a very basic level. I'm going to take this guy out, and I'm going to answer a couple other questions I get. So in a lot of my videos, I fly relatively expensive ships, 150 mil is, you know, like 150, 200 mil for my... Um, Stabber fleet issue, 300 for my Gila. You haven't seen the Stratios yet, 600 mil for that. 800 million for my Tango we flew recently, 800, you know, 900 mil for my Rattlesnake. Very expensive ships doing things that really a new player can do. And so I always get the question, well, I can't afford that ship, what do I do? Well, this is what you do. I have this MOA, I fit it up for the tracking, disrupt the tracking uh, test, showing how that works. I'm gonna get him moving, we're gonna find a combat anomaly because this is what we do. So basically, when you first start the game as a new player, run the tutorial. Even if you're not a new character, you start a new character, it's a good idea to run the tutorial until you really know what you're doing. Because it gives the tutorial does give you some ships, some equipment, gives you some skill books, it gives you a skill injector for an extra day's worth of training. And somewhere in the middle, it gives you another half a day's training in the form of a tutorial injector for 25k uh, skill points. So always good to run the tutorial. Once you get really good at it, I can do the tutorial in under two hours now, which is great. Uh, I mean, two extra hours of playtime for a day and a half's extra chaining alone is worth it for me. After the tutorial, do at least one set of the career agents. Now. If you're through the tutorial and you missed the part where you get the career agents, there's two ways to find them. And this is what we're going to talk about here. There's a hideaway here. So I'm going to run that. You've seen me run hideaways. I'm going to run it in the heel, in the heel, or heel. It's not a heel. In the moa, just for fun. Uh, the hideaways and the refuges for sure are easy, and that's the ones I would stick to at least in the beginning because the escalation is a little bit easier as well. And we'll see if we can get to that. But once you're done the tutorial, back on track. If you go into your F1 menu, you press F1, no, not F1, <laughs> you go into your help menu. So if you go in here, you find the question mark, you've got show career agents, there we go, and it shows you the closest career agents to you. Set destination, go and do those missions. Okay, once you've done them, you can't do them again. However, the other option is, if these are all done, and you can't do these ones because you've already done them, and say you've lost your ships and you have no isk. I've had some new players have this where they accidentally went into low sec and got blown up and didn't get their stuff replaced. And before I could get to them to give them some isk to buy a new ship, they got frustrated and kind of, what do I do? What do I do? So this is what you tell them. And especially if they don't want to end it. Some people, typically, especially me in the beginning, like to figure things out and do it on their own. So that's what we're going to look at next. So if those ones are done. You need to find some more agents. It's pretty easy. Open up the agency. It looks like this. It's not here, you can find it in your Neocom right there. In your Neocom menu, whoops, that's corp stuff. Let's close that, we don't need that. We are not at any decorations. So once you have this, let's move this so I can at least see what range things are at. And ammo, let's put it like over here. That's actually be good. Can I target these holding control? Thank you. All right, so if you go here, specify career agents right at the top. In any distance, you can see all these career agents. Now. The trick is, you don't have to do the career agents just for your race. You could do them for other races. Uh, as long as you don't even think your security status matters, just don't be so low that you can't fly in their space. Don't go trying minus 10 and go into, with Kaldari and go into Kaldari space. Bad tips. But you can see all these career agents, a whole bunch of them. And you can just pick one of these and go do it. So this one's within four jumps. This one, this group is within five. And you'll notice some of the system names will be the same. So when you go there, this one's already completed. You can see right there, that's who I did it for when I made this character. Um, but once you go there, you'll see all five career agents. So you've got your business, your industry, your military, military two, all of that. So you have five agents to do. Now, I like recommending, especially if you're trying to make some ISK and you just start with nothing, you lost your last ship and all your belongings, which does happen, is show up with the career agent in your pod or show up at any station in just your pod and you'll be given a starter ship and that's plenty to start the career agents with and each one will give you ISK, they'll give you skill books, they'll give you ships and modules that you can then use to run level ones. Now, once you've done at least one set of career agents, go 
if you're training in high sec, I mean, if you're going to go into low sec and do that, find a group and go ask them what to do. <laughs> I'm talking, you're going to hang out in high sec either with a corp in high sec or solo for a little bit to get your feet wet. <laughs> Just for the record. Go into level 1 missions. Take your destroyer that you end up with at the end of the military career or a frigate that you end up with at the end of the military career and go into level 1 missions. And run those and run those and run those until you get level 2 missions. Once you're at level 2 missions, you should be at a point where you can fly a cruiser. Now, if it's early and you don't have the skills for, say, tech 2 armor or tank, armor or shield tank, I recommend running level 2 missions while you train your tank. Tank is super important in PvE. It's super important everywhere, and it's actually a pretty quick train compared to your offensive stuff for the most part. Um, it's a lot quicker to get T2 tank than it is, to, most T2 tank, than it is to get T2 weapons the first time. So train up your T2 tanks so you can fit the Tech 2 deflection fields, the Tech 2 resistance modules for armor, the wrappers, all of it. And I'll show you the fit here once we're done. So if you can't fly Tech 2 armor, I'd recommend doing level 2 missions in your cruiser. A lot of them you can actually do in your in your, your destroyer as well for level 2s, but it's much easier in a, in a cruiser. And really the cruiser doesn't matter as long as you understand how the weapons work and how your tank works and all that you should have no problem with level twos do those until level three now getting a really decent battle cruiser can be a little harder although you're halfway there if you've got your tech two tank already so at this point you have a choice you can fly a pretty decent cruiser you can do what i'm trying to show you here now which is running combat anomalies and hitting those escalations and what this can do is actually speed up the process of buying that battle cruiser because they can get expensive. I mean, you want a really good fit, it can be, you know, up to 100 million, if, you know, with a decent tank and all that. So, um, one of the things I like to do with new characters when I'm playing them is literally just go from level two missions into what I'm doing here to build up some ISK while I train my battle cruiser skill to three or four, make sure I get that T2 tank, and get at least four on my, my medium guns or missiles or whatever weapon system you're gonna use and at least level three or four on the support skills for it. And I did a skills tutorial, I can go through that again later, but just you know, train all those up. Uh, the nice thing about this is it is a bit random. You're not guaranteed income like you are on missions, but the payout for a little bit of patience and luck can be huge. So now we're gonna talk into this. This is my main thing. This is actually what I primarily do in EVE when I'm in high sec, is I run combat anomalies, refuges, hideaways, and dens and I run the escalations. And I've done videos on that before, but I'm doing it here in a smaller ship, something that doesn't cost over 150 million. And I'll show you the fit here in a second. I'm just running this refuge so you can see these guys' traversals up. So I'm gonna try and get that down by flying away, like in this direction. We have some range, so it's okay. We can kill these in one shot out to our fall off. So let's see if we can get this guy down. We're gonna do that, but Bring up the fit while we do it. So you don't actually need to see me run this. This is the fit. Uh, so it says 31 million here. I was lazy and just bought everything off sell orders in the local market instead of finding the best deal. And it cost me 43 million. So by far like the cheapest ship I've flown outside of my Alpha series on video, I think. So the highs are basically 250 millimeter prototype gauze cannons. It's reasonable to expect that by the time you're ready to use a cruiser, you should be able to fit these and have some decent gunnery skills with them uh, with Kildari Navy antimatter charges now you don't need to go that route you can just use tech 1 ammo it's a lot cheaper if you're tight on cash but you do take a bit of DPS hit um, for these basic sites like the refuge here it actually doesn't matter I'm just going to do a keep it range Oops. let's do a okay he got killed um, it doesn't really matter for these base sites. When you get to the escalation, you may want to have some of this Caldari ammo for those just to get the extra DPS, but that's not a problem. So prototype guns are like a million a piece, not a problem. And they're not tech two, which is on purpose. Now, again, I do recommend a tech two tank. So here we go. Oh, let's try to get these up. We don't want to lose. I'm just trying to get an escalation. You can see I'm just running these sites. I'm running them pretty unattentive because you don't need to especially i'm out at this range now i can pretty much pop these guys as they come in on me straight so tech 2 tank i got tech 2 hardeners these are specifically for um, serpentis kinetic thermal they also work against garistas because they do the same it's just flipped they do more kinetic and less thermal than the serpentis typically 
attack two medium shield booster. Now, most of the time I get a, like a Pythum, Pythum or one of the dead space modules for this to get a little extra, but I'm flying this because it's cheap. You can meta these down if you need to, like if you need to drop these down to, you know, like a, a meta four booster, a meta four, you can do that, uh, especially in these first sites to make some esque until you need to get to the escalation. I do have a tech two medium capacitor battery. Uh, you can meta this down as well. You might have to make some more concessions, maybe in the DPS range, if you want a little more uh, capacitor to be safe. If I'm running my repper, I have almost three minutes <laughs> worth of capacitor, which some players might not be comfortable with. So just drop one of these and put some stuff down here to bring that up if you want, or even one of the rigs to get an additional. And I have just a monopropellant enduring afterburner because the monopropellant uses less capacitor while, while live. Uh, we're not moving, so I'm gonna turn that off to conserve some battery. So that's simple. These can all be meted down if you need to, but I highly recommend at the very least training for these tech twos is like your first thing once you're ready for cruisers. Maybe even before the cruiser skill because they're good on frigates and they're good on destroyers as well. Well, frigates more. The lows I have tech two mag stabs, uh, magnetic field stabilizers. These increase the damage output of my rail guns. You can meta these down again. Try to go for the metaphors. They're a little more expensive, but it's well worth it. Uh, the train to get these isn't that bad. I think it's uh, show info. Yeah, it's weapon upgrades four, which is like four days or something. It's not that bad. So I would train that maybe six days for an alpha or eight days for an alpha, depending on skills and all that stuff or on attributes. But yeah, try to get them to two because you get a nice boost out of it. Meta this down if you need to. I have a tech two damage control. Once again, you can meta it. It only brings the damage resist down to something like 12 or 12 and a half. Uh, but it's nice to get to the tech two and that's just hull upgrades four, which you're going to want anyway, especially if you're armor tanking. So that's not a bad grab here. Uh, the Tech 2s are a little bit cheaper than some, you, sometimes a little cheaper, not always, sometimes a little cheaper than the meta modules, depending on which one you've got. We're going to keep it range on this guy. We're going to bring it up to like, uh, that'll do. So it's nice and far, so we're going away from him. Try to bring his traversal down a bit. Put this on. We're still okay in the shields. Let's move on to the rigs. And then because I'm mostly in Serpentis space, I just went with an anti-kinetic, anti-thermal rig as well. Um, if you're going to travel around and fight different things, you might want to do something else here. Maybe put an, an adaptive here and swap these out depending on the space you're going in, something like that. But because I knew what I was going up against and that I don't typically uh, change it. Let's just get this guy on. There we go. That's good. Again, trying to get his traversal down so we can pop him. He's out far, so it should help as he starts to circle. He should start going down as we pull range. There we go. So yeah, one of each of those. And then... Uh, semiconductor memory cell. Now, I didn't go with Tech 2s for any of these because it's way more expensive and I was trying to keep the cost down. So, 30 million. If you can't afford 30 million, you can grab a frigate and you can run these refuges and the hideaways in a frigate or a destroyer. Now, the only thing is you probably won't be able to do the escalations, but what we're looking for when we run these sites, and yes, I know I didn't launch my drones, I kind of did that on purpose because I wasn't really paying attention anyway, is Sometimes on these sites, refuges, dens, hideaways, and the escalations, you get a rare spawn. So in the case of the, the Serpentis, you get a Shadow Serpentis something. Um, usually a Frigate or Destroyer at this level. This also happens in low sec. This also happens in null sec. And each sec space has gets bigger guys. But if you kill those, there's a chance at some good loot. I'm just uh, looking down here. One of my guys who's taken my advice and he's doing this just pulled 60 million out of a the escalation from what I'm running so narcotics warehouse so he pulled 60 million out of 58 million which means if he had bought this and I think he's running a vexer which is a similar fit uh, uses drones and his armor tanked but it's not much more than what we're looking at here and so he's probably now just on that one run paid for his ship and he's been doing it for three days he's probably pulled about if I had to do quick math without asking him to recap I'd say like 300 million out of these sites in the last week. Which means when it comes time for him to be doing level 3 missions in a battle cruiser, he can. Now, I don't really run missions anymore. I did some on the videos, and it was fun. But, and I do run them when I have a new guy that needs some standings. I'll take my rattlesnake out and take that guy through, or a whole group of them through some level 4 missions. But 9 times out of 10, if there's no event, 
Uh, there currently is an event, but nine times out of ten, if there's no event, this is what I'm doing. And I'm doing it usually in my Hilo or my Stratios, and that's where I make most of my money in high sec. I have some other stuff going on in low and null, but my high sec money comes from these sites. Uh, about two weeks ago, I was running these sites, and I dropped on a hideaway, which is like five or six frigates that spawn usually far enough away that you can sniper them before they even get to you. So keep that in mind. And I grabbed a Shadow Serpentis. So a rare spawn dropped. Shadow Serpentis damage control. Now, keep in mind this was from, I killed like six frigates, and then this thing dropped from the Shadow Serpentis. Shadow Serpentis, I keep saying, putting a T on the end. It's Shadow Serpentis, right here. Uh, so buy order, so if you just drop it off in one of these, it's 136 million. Um, uh, sell orders in like Dodixi or Jita, if we looked at it, when I sold it, was almost 300 million. It was like 260, 270 million, I think, is what we finally got for it. But it was like almost a, it was a two and a half, 300 million drop from one site that was, you could do it in, I mean, you could do it in a starter ship if you put real guns on it, no problem. So it, it's just a matter of luck. You could do this for a week and get nothing and then make like 600 million in two sites, just how the cookie crumbles. I averaged about 80 million an escalation, so it's between 60 and 80 million. Uh, and then the occasional shadows depend to spawn. Now, I don't appear to be getting any escalations at the moment. We're going to try one more section here. If there's nothing in it, I will go hunting until I get one and see if I can run a narcotics warehouse for you guys with this ship. We'll see how my time allows, but let's just see what we got. So, yeah, this is a nice cheap ship. This is how I'd recommend doing it. If you can't afford the 30 million, well, if you're in Mauro, let me know. I'll give you this one uh, or buy you something. I don't mind. Uh, if you're not, hit me up anyway, we'll see what we can do. But really, run through the tutorial, obviously. Do the career agents, because they'll give you some ships. Sell everything you don't need. And have one ship, that's what I do. I don't even keep the hauler, I just sell everything but what goes on my last ship. And I fly that to level 1 missions. Fly that one frigate through the level 1 missions, maybe upgrading it if you need to, and buying some bits for it. But save all your money, and by the time you're at the level 2 missions, you should be able to buy one of these. And the whole time just train your skills and away you go so but yeah this is it i'm pretty sure like i haven't tested this in the escalation but i am pretty sure they could do it i may have to actually take out more ships than i normally would like on my big expensive ships i just tank all the damage and kill the, th the final thing the base so if you want to see how it, how i do that you can watch the previous video i've done two or three videos with it i did one in the one in the stabber fleet issue i did one in the gila I think that's it. I think that's all I've shown. Oh, I did one in my Confessor. My Confessor as well, my Tech 3 Cruiser. But yeah, so look at that. Unless we get one here. But with this, what I would do is on the, the, on the rooms, I would carefully keep range and snipe in from just at the edge. Like, you know, somewhere in the middle between 17 and 31 maybe. Or even let them come into 17 to mitigate traversal and just wipe them out from a distance. That'll probably work just fine. I've done it before. It was years ago. I haven't had to do it in something small like this since I got my 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 Gila. But yeah, so this is what I would do. This is what I did as my primary function way back in the day. Way, way back when, before I went to Nullsec for the first time. This was my bread and butter right here. Because I got tired of grinding level 3 missions and just did this for a very long time. Alright, I'm going to see if I can find a couple more sites, see if I can get an escalation off one of them for you guys here, so just stand by and I will be right back. Okay, well, I've flown around for a little bit. I have not been able to get an escalation or a rare spawn, but that's fine, that happens. It's hit or miss. I will try and at least have the camera rolling when I do this stuff, so if I do get a rare spawn, I can show you a clip. But let's see, we may not actually get it, but we'll see if there's anybody in these one of these detention sites, which is the current event. No, that Megathron's in there. Not even gonna bother. Uh, I'll see if I can find us an empty one of these sites. So what I do is I hit D scan, see the Megatron. I know he's in this site. There's just nowhere else for him to be. All right. So as I was warping to this gate, one of these spawned, and so far I didn't see anything. We're in range, so there's nothing there. So we're gonna go take it. Uh, hopefully nobody comes to race us because I doubt I'll be able to race anybody. But we're gonna do this. And look, I'm in my Gila. 
No, I'm just kidding. This is still my MOA. A long time ago, I had picked up the Garista skin for it because I liked it. Um, back when I used to fly a MOA and skins became a thing. Actually, I don't remember why I bought that. Cause I haven't flown a MOA in a while, but I bought it. So I have these two skins for it. I just put that on to try to trick you guys because why not? Oh, my, one of my buddies in Corp is razzing me because I haven't got an escalation and he's been just getting them all day. That's fine. He can be that way. You know who you are. All right, so with this one, we're going to actually have to keep moving because our tank is not quite where it is with our other ships, but that's okay. Let's lock these babies up and we'll see what we can do. Let's get our afterburner on. And uh, we'll see how bad this is. Oh, yeah, this is going to take some doing. What's his traversal? So he's got a pretty high traversal, which might be part of the problem. Let's see if we can just get him to fall in behind us. We need to make some distance so that we can really make this work. Here we go. Yeah, now we're starting to hit him. There we go. Now let's see how big this rep's for. That's not bad. We get about three minutes charge on it with everything running. Now if we have to. Now these guys should be pretty low on the traversal front, so we should... Yeah, that won't be too bad. Let's keep it range on them. Let's set this to... What was it? 10? Let's set it to 15. No, let's set it to 20. Just outside our optimal. 20,000. Because we want to keep them within 31 if we can. Although we do pretty decent damage out of this range. So we'll just try to keep them... See how this works? His traversal is going up because he's turning. Okay. No, that's fine. Beautiful. What I will do instead then is just orbit this thing. Let's see if we can get them to follow in behind us at... Where are we at? Let's orbit it at 20. Let's see if we can get them to fall in behind us. We can wipe them out while we wait for the uh, boss to spawn. So far, tank's holding fine. There's a battleship. That's going to hurt. If our speed doesn't get up here quickly. At 31, we should probably want to get in close on him. But we'll want to spiral because we don't want him to fly straight. Actually, he is missiles so it won't matter so we can just dive in on him if we want to where is he so do we see him moving the camera he's out further there he's over there so let's just go out towards him like this for now whoops click again there we go and let's start shooting him we need him off the grid as quick as we can because he's going to be their biggest threat to us and we'll see if he starts hitting us here uh so we're because it's missiles and we're traveling pretty fast He's not doing too much damage to us, which is great. I can appreciate that. So we're going to just grab this again so we can orbit it. We're going to set this as well to 20. Just because of what we're doing here. Okay, and let's pick this guy off. How's this traversal? Actually, he probably wasn't the best bet, but we'll see. What I'm hoping to do is get him to fall in behind us here as we go up. We'll just keep picking away. We'll see if this guy can run the site. Now, normally I would drop a MTU to loot all the wrecks because all some of the good, you get some pretty good loot out of the wrecks too. You get the damage and armor and speed boosters or damage and tank and speed boosters from the agency stuff. You get some of the clothing, the Garista's clothing, which is all right. Uh, fireworks, I have tons and tons of fireworks. Let's just zoom out a bit so you can see. So you can see they're kind of going sideways and we're not hitting them very well. Yeah, traversal is really, really high. I'm not going to waste the ammo. Let's fly straight away. Let's go straight up, like that. Because we need to get our traversal down. So we're going to go like that, and we're going to watch for these guys to start dropping. Who's low? This guy's dropping. This guy's low. Let's get him. So, you know, this is the one we were on. We're going to pick our target. He's nice and low, so we should apply some really decent damage. Who's next? This guy. Is he coming down? He is. Let's take him out. Let's target up some more. Let's take him. Before he starts climbing again. So you can see I'm using the traversal, getting right at the lowest, because that's who I'm going to apply the best to. There we go. This is actually taking it out quicker than my uh, Tengu does with the missiles, the heavy missiles, which is great. And once we get to about 31, I'm going to want to sort of slow down, which is fine, because when I slow down, I'll be going at about their speed. But his traversal dropped pretty decently, because he's not going very fast. Who's next? Do I have these guys targeted? Let's target some of these guys. This guy's going to be next right here. We'll wait for him to get below to something. Oh, actually, he's out at the end of our range, so let's actually set this to 30. That'll do. We'll just keep it range on 30, and that'll be good, because the further they're out, the less their speed affects their traversal, and so on and so on. This guy's next. That's good. Actually, we should switch to him, but we won't. We'll just try to grin it. 
There we go. He's coming up. No, he's coming up. He's coming down. So we'll just pop him. Bam. 473 damage, just like that. Traversal is really low. So he's coming straight in at me as fast as he can. You can see that. And when they're coming in straight, they're easier to hit. Who's next? This guy's nice. Oh, this guy's going to drop. Oh, I don't have him targeted. Let's grab this one. Uh, not him either. Let's grab this one before he gets too fast here. Let's target up some more. Uh, let's get this cruiser targeted up because he's going to do more damage to us. We have to actually get in close to him. He's way outside. Who do we got? Uh, this guy looks good. Oh, this guy was better. We don't have him targeted. But that's okay. Let's keep it range on him. So we'll pull away. Tank is holding just fine. We'll watch this guy. We're looking for the assassin. How much damage he's doing. We may have to follow in on him. He's down near these guys though, right? Yeah, he's over there. So that's fine. Uh, who's next? This guy. Keep it range. 49, eh? So we'll see what happens here. Let's actually keep it range on this guy. Uh, this guy. Shoot him. Let's kind of head back this way. So we can get past. We can buzz that cruiser. We're going to actually hit some traversal as they swing past us, but that's okay. Uh, this guy going up, he is... Yeah, and so this is the strategy when you're using turrets, especially because I'm not overpowering the site by a lot. Uh, we're going to have to rep in a minute here because we're going to take damage as we're flying straight in here. So we're going to fly past all this DPS, but they should there. He's slowing down as he tries to turn around, which I will take. Uh, this guy is who we're shooting. Come on, hit him. Kill him. We're okay. We're okay. This guy's coming in. We're actually going to start shooting him in a minute. Let's uh, let's get an orbit on him. How are you doing? You're super high on your traversal now. Actually, you're pretty still good. We should kill you in one more hit once we're reloaded here. Let's uh, wrap up a bit. So I could have kited them around a little better, but I'm really out of practice on turrets, to be completely honest with you. So here we go. Let's see what we get. Where's this guy? He's like super fast. We're going to turn our guns off to conserve ammo. We're going to take out this battle to this cruiser here instead. We're just going to watch our tank. We've got to watch our capacitor. I want to save some of it for the last battleships. Yeah, this cruiser's going down fast. Not a problem. We need to get this guy next. This traversal is better. And we can stop this now. We're just going to fly straight out. We're going to keep it range on this guy. We're going to keep it range on this guy. And see who's next. This guy's next. Blap. Let's get some more locks on here. Yeah, this is going actually quite nicely. Just got to keep moving and keep the traversal managed. This guy's actually next because he's low. And we're not keeping range on anybody, so let's keep a range on this guy. See if we can get him up here. We'll wipe him off the field because he's already hurt. We just got to watch our distance here because that's how far away from the first battleship spawn we're going to be. They spawn at zero on the beacon now. So how's you doing? You got your traversal up, didn't you? Okay. How about you? Coming down you are. You're fast, but you're coming straight at us, so not a problem. This guy next. Oh, there he is. We're actually going to try to orbit this guy, and we're just going to take him out. So we're going to stop our guns, because if we take him out, the site is over, and these guys all warp away. So we're going to wait till we're within our, at least our fall off. Now he's a big target, so we shouldn't have too much trouble hitting him from, even with 50%. So we'll see, here comes a the battle. There we go. He's not doing too bad. So I'll, I'll glance over it just because we are fighting against missiles right now. So missiles don't have... Uh, ooh, wow. They don't have tracking, and they don't have trajectory, or and they don't worry about traversal. What they do worry about is speed and signature radius of your target. I'm actually going to close in just a little bit more so we can get some more damage. So the faster you're going and the smaller your signature radius, the less damage missiles do. Okay. And then the different sizes of missiles have two stats. So small have can hit smaller, faster moving targets better than the large cruise missiles. Uh, those two stats are explosion velocity, which the explosion velocity is affected by the speed of your target. So the faster explosion velocity, the slower your target, the more damage it does and counters that. The faster it's traveling and the smaller. And then explosion radius, which is affected by your target's signature radius. And by tweaking those two stats, you can affect different things differently. So battleships don't typically go fast. So increasing your signature radius or your, yeah. Anyway, point is, 
Signature radius being smaller concentrates the explosion more. Or not signature radius, explosion radius being smaller concentrates the damage in a smaller area, applies more damage to its target. Oh, right, turrets. Uh, usually when I'm flying turrets, lately I've been doing lasers in a sniper configuration, so I'm way out, just shooting things as they come in. Let's turn on our tank here, turn on our booster to hold us now that we're in close, we're taking all the damage. So we'll see if this holds long enough to kill this battleship. Once we get the shields down, we should be pretty safe. We should also pick up, there we go, we're up to speed again, so we'll just get our shields down a bit. So this is a nice thing because we can regen. We get our shields down to where we're comfortable, we turn it off and our capacitor can recharge. So you actually end up with more than three minutes of actual recharge time. We'll just do it there for a minute, see how things go. So you can see it's refilling, then as these pop it'll go down a bit, but it should net positive us. We're halfway through the... Uh, the shields are doing 900, 1300. You can see the variance. And let's just see if it can hold. If we can get this down, these guys will all fly away and we'll be fine. And then the second battleship shouldn't be a problem because they're not doing all that much damage. Let's ride it to about half. Okay. Let's turn it on. It gave us another, filled up this bar at least. And we'll just sort of manage this and see what we can get. I'm hoping we can do it. I might risk, if it comes to it, I might risk going all the way down. We can't let the capacitor run out because everything turns off and then we're screwed. So we might have to try to let it ride down a little further, but we've gained a bit. And we're almost there on the shield. So let's leave it there and we'll see what we can do here. And we're going to risk it just because if we can get through here, we should be good. Um, shields are going down. Ours are doing okay. I'd like to recharge, but I don't want to slow down because they're going to do more damage if I slow down. And I don't want to turn these off because they're going to do more damage if I lower my resistances. So, it might be an option to just pull this, pull range and come back as well, as you can sometimes do. Right about half. Let's wait, wait, wait. Because these do use capacitor as well, so when this is recharging, maybe we'll boost and see how that works. While it's reloading. We go one more shot on reload. Let's turn this on for a minute. We'll get to about here at the most. And we'll just wait. Let's recharge that shield a little bit. Yeah, this is working. Just managing, micromanaging your shield and guns. Let's start shooting again. So we want to get through there. You go. You can see we're already now we're chewing through them here because we're through the shields. We're at that last little bit and we're bleeding through to his armor, which is fantastic. We'll let this run to about here. Eat up this sort of column a little bit and see where we're at. But I think we're going to be fine. And so far nobody's come to join us, which is fantastic. Because it would suck to have someone come in and kill this on us now. Okay, we're on the bar that we're going to stop at for a minute. So let's just get the last one there. Good enough. That put us pretty decent. This guy should drop before we have to start boosting again. And as he does, we will turn into him. But I want to wait until we're not taking damage. Because if we slow down too much, it could hurt us. So, let's track them. So you can see them explode. Explosions are pretty. There we go. Yeah, we filled that bar. That's not bad. We're doing all right. Now, these cruisers joining probably didn't help our tank any. So, I could see if there was like a, battle, a couple battleships here, we might have trouble. Although, with our speed, the battleships do actually the least damage, probably. What's he do? Let's see if we can see his in here. Raka. Raka. That's us hitting him. 26. So, he's a little more than the killers. There we go. He is down. Now we should stop taking damage. The final volley's coming in. And we're gonna reload. And for now, let's turn all this off. So we shouldn't be taking any more hits. Uh, we want this on, because we wanna go get that wreck. So if we have to bail, at least we got something for our efforts. We're gonna watch for that second spawn. Now he comes in at like 60 or 70 kilometers from the beacon. So we are gonna have to fly into him a bit. But once he comes in, I'll turn stuff back on. That's probably good there. There he is. Let's turn this on just so we're taking the least possible damage. And we'll quickly loot this. There we go. Loot it. We'll head towards him now. I'll show you that in a second. It looked like it said 290 million. Um, and I'll show you about that as well, just for those that are unaware. <laughs> so it seems to think the berets are 290 million, but if you check Eve Prazel, they actually are sell orders for like 400,000 now. So 
you're not going to get 300 million for that norm now may have you know, a few weeks ago if it ever dropped but uh, these here this is a standard so it's probably about 12 million and then these can go for a million for the two of them probably but that's okay try to get this guy up now we're at 61 kilometers is way outside our range so we're just going to keep closing watch our damage and once we get close enough i'm going to switch to orbiting at 15 but i want to wait till we're like inside our fall off at least before i start that orbit so i can start shooting him but you can see he's not doing a lot of damage and he's the only one now so we should be perfectly fine i do also want to try these i have a passive fit caracal i might try these in which is also a pretty cheap little ship i can show you that once i'm in orbit here hang on uh, it's a little more than this which is and i wanted to do the tracking thing which is why i went with this uh, moa first but I do have a caracal that also works pretty, should work pretty well. And it's passive regen. And let's just see here. So if we look at our shield boost is 34.7 hit points per second with 88 and 87 resist. 1500. Are we in range yet? That's just, that should be fine. And we'll just, uh, not switch, not 20. Orbit 15. So we can get in under our optimal. And we should still be going at a pretty good clip to avoid some of the damage from his... So I'll let you watch this. You can see the number increase. Should increase as we get in closer and closer. 632, 726. Total round of ammo. And again, there's that randomness I was telling you about where there's like a range, just a good hit. Uh, it does a hit. We should start seeing penetrates, so that's a nice big hit. And that's based on your chance to hit. And there's a chart on the Eve University page if you want to study it and become a master. I fully encourage you to do so. But let's take a look at the Caracal while we whittle this guy down. Let's watch her. Yeah, tank is fine. I'll just sort of... Somewhere in the middle here. There we go. So you guys can watch whatever you're interested in. So my caracal is... Uh, this one. LSB. So 46 million. So I bet you it cost me about 50 in the end. But it's 1900 EHP. The resists are a little lower, so we got to watch that. And its passive regen is a little higher. Uh, DPS, once we load the Kidari Navy Scourge light missiles, is a little lower as well. But we do it out to 55 kilometers. So I would like to try it. It is a rapid light missile, so it's going to do really well against frigates anyway. Uh, the only downside is the reload time. So we'll try this as well in these sites in the next video. But I just wanted to get this one down in this MOA to show it can be done. And then probably give it away to someone in my court because that's what I've been doing. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun actually relearning turrets properly like i said i was doing a sniper fit with my stratios where i just stand out and let them fly at me i don't even have to worry about the traversal so that's why i had to go hunting for it because i haven't had it actually shown in a little while because i kind of just knew i would watch the velocity of things and kind of get them to slow down and that would tell me that they're trying to turn or something but i've put it back i might start using turrets more just as practice yeah see it's holding just on our passive regen of almost nothing because our effective, so he's doing 17 damage per shot because of our resists. So the shield itself actually has 2,800, but because of our regen and our resists, it's like having 15,000 points of armor. It's pretty nice. And we'll get in. We can do all that stuff too. Effective. I'm gonna do videos on how I use effective EHP. Um, all that's done in an outside of an Eve program for me. I look at it through a program called Pypha, which is amazing. If you're interested in fitting or you want to play with fits, get Pypha, load your character into it so you can use your actual skills. Just don't forget to cycle our guns. And we'll just keep popping this guy. Uh, we don't need to get any closer because we're doing our 100%. If we go closer, we're actually going to increase the traversal. So we could actually maybe try going out a little further. Uh, let's do it this way. Let's get it. Whoop, let's get it right on 17, since it looks like we can hold it wherever we want. So we'll come down or out. Sorry, or up, wherever it is. Uh, no, I want. Can I? 30. Sometimes it's a little fiddly. Let's get it 17. Boom. That should just pull us out a couple kilometers. We'll see our speed dip. We might take a little bit heavier hit as that's dropped down a bit. Let's see if he shoots us in that time. We might actually re-accelerate before he shoots at us again, because if it's slow, no, there is 23, so yeah, it went up like 6 damage. So now we should start seeing some better hits out here. Uh, there's a hit for 10, there's a hit for 9. 
sort of settle into our, our, our orbit here. Because at this edge we should be right on the 100 to 90 percent, which means we could... Because in close our traversal was up. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, so... There's a nice penetrate for almost 1200. And he's almost done. So now with him I'm just going to come straight in on him because it's only him shooting at me. And since traversal doesn't matter against missiles, this could actually increase our damage. There you go, yeah, see? So by turning it in, this went down, and now we're doing almost 1,500 a shot. Just like that, right? So that was it in action. There's a randomness, taking some of it. There's a penetrates. Smashing hits are great, but they're really hard to get. I don't really worry about them too much. Penetrates are usually... Or not smashers. Smashers are okay, too. Uh, we may get one as we get closer. We'll see. Because he's going to start flying away from us. Yeah, his traversal is coming down to almost nothing. So this actually... Oh, we got him. And yeah. So there we go. Took them both down. I did it in a 40 million, I would say 40 million, because that's what I paid for it. 30 to 40 million esque cruiser. Did the site with a little bit of know how. Oh, we got a CA3. I've got a couple of these. They're about 20 million right now. So that's not bad at all. So between that and this, we made about, we've made 30 million. We've basically paid for this ship. I don't know if it'll show on here. Uh, seller, oh, they've come down. Seller is down as low as five for that one. Uh oh. Uh oh, what have we done? So I might have to run two of these. Whoops, not that. We might have to run two of these sites to pay for our uh, seller is nine. Yeah, so we'd have to do two of these to pay for it. But that's okay. Uh, there we go. So you see that it does it. Tank held. Look a little bit. Took, whoops. Took a little bit of fancy flying, but we managed to do it. All right, and I just wanted to bust in here. I know I'm about to end the video, but my daughter will kill me if I do not mention it. Uh, I want to say thank you to Critter for naming my ship. She chose to name my Moa Kit Kat, and I just wanted to make sure I called her out so when she watches the video, she hears it. So there we go, and on to the outro. There we go. So I didn't get an escalation. Let's see if anything's on here. No, but I did manage to run a Garista's hunt site and get the loot for it and you know between the four of these I probably made 20 million so paid for half of my ship already my, not, not including any bounties I got which is probably another million total and there we go so hope you enjoyed that video guys if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe let's get the channel up to a thousand subscribers that'd be fantastic and I'd really appreciate it I do appreciate everybody who has supported the channel already and you know who you are and thank you very much I'll catch you all next time. Fly safe. I'm out of here.